Flanders field, the poppies blow between the crust that mock our place. And in the sky, the lark still bravely singing, fly scared amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunsets glow. Love and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders field. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you, with failing hands, we throw the torch. Be it yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep. So poppies grow in Flanders field. Peter's words, we bring these fair flowers in memory of our comrades slain. With malice towards none, with charity for all, let us strive to bind up the nation's wound, to care for those who bear the scars of battle, to relieve the widow and the orphan, and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. Good morning, one and all. Happy Memorial Day. We'll try that take two. Good morning, one and all. Good morning. Much better, thank you so much. Welcome to Brookline Memorial Day. Uh, welcome to our ceremony here. I appreciate that all of you have come to join us and be a part of this and to be thankful for what has happened in the past what continues to happen in the present and what will happen in the future. Uh, okay, uh, so without further ado, the uh, Master of Ceremonies, uh, Bill McGrody, and the Veteran Service Officer, also Senior Vice Commander of the Veterans of Foreign Wars, Bill McGrody. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here today, and it's always my honor. Thank you for coming on this Memorial Day. I would like to introduce Father Jonathan Gasper, pastor of the St. Mary's Church, Brookline Mass, for the invocation. Father Gasper. Let us pray. Gracious God, on this Memorial Day, we remember and give thanks for those who have given their lives in the service of our country. When the need was the greatest, they stepped forward and did their duty to defend the freedoms that we enjoy and to win the same for others. O oh God, you yourself have taught us that no love is greater than that which gives itself for another. These honored dead gave the most precious gift they had life itself, for loved ones and neighbors, for comrades and country, and for us. Help us to honor their memory by caring for the family members they have left behind, by ensuring that their wounded comrades are properly cared for, by being watchful caretakers of the freedoms for which they gave their lives, and by demanding that no other young men and women Follow them to a soldier's grave, unless the reason is worthy and the cause just. Holy One, help us to remember that freedom is not free. There are times when its cost is indeed dear. Never let us forget those who paid so terrible a price to ensure that freedom could be our legacy. Though their names may fade with the passing of generations, May we never forget what they have done. Help us to be worthy of their sacrifice. This we ask in your holy name, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Father Jonathan, thank you very much. And I also have to thank him. As we marched in, the bells of St. Mary literally serenaded us. It was really great.
It is now my honor to introduce First Sergeant Gregory Taylor, United States Army, Vietnam veteran, uh, past commander of American Legion Post 11, who will give us the Pledge of Allegiance. First Sergeant. Honor Guards, bring your units to attention and present arms. Morning, everyone. Morning, everyone. Morning. Can I get you to join with me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and, and justice for all. Please remain and present arms. Ms. Kristen DeFossi will now honor us with the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh see does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Kirsten, thank you very much. Honor Guards, bring your units to order arms and parade rest. I would like now to call up Len Hooley from the American Legion to read the list of fallen from the post. Len. John Tynan, Warren Goodman, George Sala. We like to take a moment of silence for those who have gone past us. Thank you. The other half wasn't Len Hooley. That was Yvette Bennett, another American Legion member, the better looking one. I would now like Commander Raymond Cunningham, VFW Post 864, to lead, read the, his list of fallen. Commander, right? So, this is uh, the first Memorial Day that we have without our uh, our ex, uh, our past commander. Um, he's going to be greatly missed. Thank you all. That was Commander John Tynan, a hero from Vietnam, a hero from the fire department, and served the VFW and the, and the veterans of Brookline for 10 consecutive years after he's retired. Let's actually hear it for John Tynan. Now I get to get into all sorts of trouble because I have to introduce the dignitaries and I always mess this up. However, from our select board, we have Selectman Green, Ben Scoia, and Warren. And if I've missed somebody, you can David fire me Perlman. on, what's that? David Perlman. David Perlman's here too. See, I always miss somebody. 
We also have our town administrator, Chaz Carney here, and my boss, Sigali Reese, is here. Thank you all for coming and supporting us. And whoever I missed, I apologize in advance. Okay. It is now my honor to introduce Selectman Green from the Board of Selectmen who will give the town greeting. Selectman Green's been an immense supporter of our veterans. Thank you, Selectman Green. Thank you, Bill. So greetings from the town of Brookline to all of you on this kind of nice day. <laughs> I'm Bernard Green, chair of the Brookline Select Board, and I am honored to be allowed to say a few words on this day when we recognize and reflect on the sacrifices of those who made the ultimate sacrifice for America. And I'm heartened to see so many of you coming out on this, like I said, overcast but nice day to remember those brave men and women. When I give remarks on occasions like this, I try to do two things. First, offer some interesting background or history relevant to the occasion. And second, offer some personal thoughts that may help the audience relate to the occasion in a different way or on a deeper level. I wanna start my thoughts on what we honor uh, thoughts on what the men and women we honor today sacrifice for. So President Biden on Saturday spoke to the graduating class at West Point, and he spoke about the oath that they take. He said, on your very first day at West Point, you raised your right hand and took an oath, not to a political party, not to a president, but to the Constitution of the United States of America. Biden continued, saying that by defending the Constitution, you are defending the freedoms that, that it protects, the right to vote, the right to worship, the right to raise your voice in protest. So my message to you is that we should remember those brave men and women who sacrificed their lives for us, not just on Memorial Day, but on every day when you go into the voting booth, as, as I hope you all do, or when you go to a church, or a synagogue, or a mosque, or a temple, or a meeting of a secular humanist group of your choosing, or when you raise your voice against the actions of the select board. You can do that because of the brave men and women who fought for our country and its constitution over the many years. By the way, in addition to more Memorial Day events at Arlington National Cemetery, Biden in a week will travel to Normandy, France to honor the falling soldiers from many countries on this, the 80th anniversary of the D-Day invasion. Very important day that I think we all should remember and study. So what is Memorial Day? Memorial Day, or Decoration Day, is a federal holiday in the United States designed for remembering the men and women who died while serving in the country's armed forces. The holiday is observed every year on the last Monday in May. And as I said, remember these folks every day, not just on days like this. On May 1st, in 1865, in Charleston, South Carolina, Recently freed African Americans held a parade of 10,000 people to honor 257 dead Union soldiers whose remains they had reburied from a mass grave in a Confederate prison camp. Thus, according to a uh, renowned uh, Yale historian and his research, African Americans originated Memorial Day in Charleston in 1865. I say that because I want you all to remember that many times the people who are not defended by America are the ones who defend America the strongest. And I think of my grandfather, uh, Corporal uh, John R. Green, who fought in the First World War in that regard. Decorating the graves of soldiers is believed to have originated in Columbus, Mississippi in 1866 to honor Confederate soldiers. So the decoration has a long history. 
In 1868, the, the tradition of placing flowers on veterans' graves was continued by the establishment of Decoration Day by an organization of Union veterans, the Grand or Army of the Republic. Let me conclude with a poem, if you don't mind. A poem that reminds us that we should never be fooled into thinking war is heroic, that the slaughter and destruction of war should be glorified, but that the brave men and women who fought and died in wars are to be honored on Memorial Day and every day of the year. The message I'd like people to remember is this. As we honor those who died in battle, we cannot forget the scars of those battles suffered by those who initially survived. And in that regard, let me read a poem from an anthology of war poems titled Winning Hearts and Minds. The poem is by Vietnam veteran Jan Barry. It's called The Longest War. The longest war is over, or so they say, again. But I can still hear the gunfire every night from my bed. The longest nightmare never seems to ever quite come to an end. The brutality of war, as the poem suggests, lasts long after the final battles in the minds and bodies of the warriors. Let us not forget them on this day or any day. Thank you. Selectman Green, thank you, and thank you for your constant support for our veterans. We couldn't do it without the support of the Board of Selectmen and the town. Now to read the Memorial Day Proclamation is our State Representative, Tommy Vittori. Tommy? I bring with me a proclamation from Her Excellency the Governor. Whereas, while the nation was still recovering from the Civil War, people in cities and towns across the country gathered to honor the soldiers who had given their lives, celebrating the first Declaration Day. And whereas, after World War I, the nation came together again to honor those who had fallen in service to their country. Renamed Memorial Day, the last Monday in May is when people remember and honor the memory of all the men and women who fought and died in all American wars and conflicts. And whereas, throughout our country's history, thousands of Massachusetts residents have fought in wars and conflicts to defend our safety and our way of life. And whereas their legacy of patriotism and dedication to country is an inspiration to all Americans. And whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts residents remember the bravery of those who gave their lives so that their sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Now, therefore, Maura Healy, governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, does hereby proclaim May 27th, 2024, to be Memorial Day and urges all residents of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance, as I would add, as we are doing now. I want to take just a moment to talk about an action that I and 159 others took just this past Wednesday, May 22nd. Uh, my colleagues and I, the members of the Massachusetts House of Representatives, passed a bill called the HERO Act, and I'll bet you can guess who we were thinking about when we passed it. And I want to just highlight a few of the things we did. It's a long bill. It's got a lot of details that smoothen out some of the bureaucratic hurdles that our veterans face in um, acquiring or obtaining benefits to which uh, they deserve and are obliged. But 
The bill broadened the definition of veteran for the purposes of expanding veteran benefits to better align with federal law. It provide it now, uh, if this becomes law, and I have no doubt that it will, will provide a medical assistance benefit, behavioral health assistance benefit, and dental benefit beyond benefits available through federal programs. It increases the annuity for blind, paraplegic, or veterans with disabilities. It codifies the authority of the EOVS, the Executive Office of Veteran Services, to operate, maintain, and expand the Massachusetts Veterans Memorial Cemeteries. It requires the Secretary of EOVS to create and distribute a notice, including information regarding the services and resources available to veterans to be posted in the workplace. It increases the tax credit for each qualified veteran hired by an employer and for subsequent years of continued employment. It requires notice to veterans for credible service for retirement, a detail that those of us who work for state government know all too well it's about our pension and the rest of the public is happy to not be uh, mired in the details of, but it's a really important benefit for veterans who work in state government. It also provides an EMT training waiver for veterans because it turns out if you have medical training through your military service, you likely are already qualified to be an EMT. To require they take the course again is a terrible waste of time. And to give you a sense of how much more is in the bill, I'm going to hold up my three pages of notes. I only said the highlighted stuff. That's page one. That's page two. And that's page three. So there's an awful lot of things here we're doing. I'm delighted that the House was able to get it done before Memorial Day. I fully expect our colleagues in the Senate will get it done before Veterans Day. I sure hope so because we've got to get it done by July 31st. I'm sure we will. Thank you for being here. We're going to keep uh, our eye on the ball when it comes to veterans at the State House. And I know, Bill, you'll keep your eye on the ball here. And I'm grateful for that. Thank you so much. He says he's grateful, but I call him all the time for stuff. He must be getting tired of it. Never, never tired. But I'll tell you this, our state representative always steps up to the plate for us, 100% of the time. <laughs> We've heard enough talking for a bit. It's now my pleasure to introduce Kristen DeFossi again with a musical rendition. Kristen? America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Lovely, Kirsten. Thank you very much. It is now my pleasure to introduce Charles Carney, the uh, Town of Brookline Administrator, who will read the Gettysburg Address. And Sebastian wants to come up in the worst way possible. <laughs> come on up, Arden. Who's this one? This is Arden. Arden? Yes. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. 
We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that this nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it, far beyond our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who have fought so hard here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. Yes, thank you very much. We read the Gettysburg Address and Logan's orders, General Logan's orders, because Memorial Day originated as part of a healing process from the terrible, terrible Civil War, where our democracy was really hanging on the edge. Today, all our citizens need to remember that as we see threats to our democracy from foreign and domestic sources, we need to stand up for our, democ for our democracy. If we don't, the names of all these men who died for that democracy, they died in vain. So I thank you all for coming today and standing up. Make sure in 2024 you vote, because this is a way we exercise and defend our democracy. It is now my honor to once again welcome First Sergeant Gregory Taylor, U.S. Army veteran. He's also a Bronze Star recipient and uh, past commander of the American Legion. Who will read General Logan's orders? First Sergeant, you get to be the general. Oh, are you, is that vet doing it? Yeah, I'm, that's fine. That's okay. that's okay. I'm sorry, we're going with looks again. Here's a vet. <laughs> general orders number 11. The 30th day of May, 1868, is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet, churchyard in the land. In this observance, no form or ceremony is prescribed, but posts and comrades will in their own way arrange such fitting services and testimonials of respect as circumstances may permit by commander of the Ma by commander of major general john a logan adjutant general of the united states army yvette thank you very much in my office if you've been there there's a, there's a uh, a picture of the Vietnam Wall with a veteran putting his hand on the wall and the reflection of some of the men that he served with looking back at him that are no longer with us. I don't have empirical data on this, but there's about 55,000 names on that wall. And I believe that if you took and added the number of men and women who served in Vietnam who died from overdoses or suicide or just reckless living from the 10 years after the war, that that wall would be twice as long, and they are just as much casualties of the war as those that gave their lives on the ground. We'll never, we never want that to happen again in this country. In my office, is just Claudia and I. We can't do it all alone. We have to have working partners. We have a great working partner with the Boston Veterans Administration and the VA hospitals, whose health care, by the way, is second to none. We also have another great working partner and that is the New England Center and Home for Veterans. 
They're on Court Street. They provide places for our veterans to go that need help because we don't want to add names to that wall, either even and figuratively. They do a myriad of services. They're not just warehousing veterans. They're taking care of veterans. It is my honor and privilege to introduce Ms. Polly Klein, Outreach and Triage Specialist for the New England Home, the New England Center and Home for Veterans. Polly? The New England Center and Home for Veterans is a private nonprofit dedicated to assisting military vets who are experiencing homelessness and housing insecurity. We are a nine-story building in downtown Boston with 250 transitional beds for those needing shelter. We provide an array of services on site. Each vet who comes to stay has both a clinical and a housing case manager, as well as access to employment services and a medical clinic. We also assist veterans residing off-site in Eastern Massachusetts and can provide community-based case management, financial assistance, and housing stabilization. Examples of the types of assistance we are able to provide to vets who are eligible include rental arrears, utility arrears, moving costs, first and last month's rent, income stabilization, access to benefits, access to local community resources, and more. The New England Center and Home for Veterans started helping homeless vets 35 years ago and does a lot to support our soldiers. Veterans are more likely to experience homelessness than the general population. The cost of living continues to rise and wages are not keeping up. Homelessness is a stigmatized and complicated issue. People don't know how to help, so they ignore it and it becomes invisible. At the New England Center, I'm responsible for conducting an hour-long intake interview with the vets who need shelter. This one-on-one, -on -one, deeply personal time with each vet has changed my understanding of this issue. <clears throat> Doing this job, I've learned that homelessness is a master's degree from Harvard and a nasty divorce. It's escaping a violent family member who is dependent on. Homelessness is a spouse dying whose income paid half the rent. It's a high-paying, stable job following five tours of du duty in the Middle East and then sudden onset of narcolepsy that spirals into job loss and eviction. Homelessness is going to war, then returning home, but having to battle your own mind. It is an aging and disabled Vietnam vet whose home of 35 years burned to the ground. Eviction is a laid off single mom of two young kids. It's a cancer diagnosis and inability to work. It's an aging couple who can't keep up with another rent increase. It's crippling grief following the loss of a child. There's no perfect policy, no perfect grant that meets everyone's needs, no, perf no perfect shelter. People get forgotten or, or would rather suffer than ask for help. But I can tell you that at the New England Center and Home for Veterans, we learn from our incredible leadership team how to care for our service members. The center has helped many men and women who took an oath to serve this country, America, our home, do you ever stop to think about what that means to live in America? A country that battled for, battled for and was founded on principles of independence and freedom, a legacy carried on by our service members who vowed to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Men and women who put their differences aside to serve a greater purpose, the United States of America and the people who call it home. <clears throat> Many of them lost their lives doing so which is why we're here today, to thank and honor our service members who paid the ultimate price. One of the questions I asked during the intake interview is, have you explored the idea of staying with family and friends? Most of the time that answer is, that's not an option, or I don't have any. My personal opinion on how we can help prevent homelessness in our daily lives and honor our service members other than, of course, telling everyone about the New England Center and making generous monetary donations, is by looking for similarities and not differences and living by principles over personalities. I'll explain with a personal story. Prior to COVID, I was a member of Mosaic Boston Church right here in Brookline. The pastors, the pastors are known for homophobia, cultural isolation, cultural insensitivity, and systematic oppression of women 
I decided to leave the church and subsequently my marriage because the abuse they facilitate and condone became unbearable. I paid dearly for this and continue to do so. The only difference between me and the homeless population is that I had friends and family who could help me. My family members and I have wildly different opinions about politics, life, the world, and pretty much everything else. But we, we made a decision to choose each other over politicians. Our country is founded on freedom of speech, but that legacy is not always used responsibly by our leaders who benefit from divisive and isolating language. Having everything I love taken from me changed my priorities. Freedom is my most important asset. Freedom to believe what I want, love who I want, go where I want, dress how I want. Freedom to choose. Not every country affords the privilege to think differently than our elders and peers, much less express it. So please don't give up on your people because of their political or religious beliefs. One day, they're gonna need you. One day, you're gonna need them. I'll end with this. While I was brainstorming what to say today, I spent some time talking to an Afghanistan vet who's staying with us at the center. I wanted to understand what Memorial Day means to him. Someone who saw combat, saw people die, bravely tried to save people and couldn't. His response surprised me. He said thank yous and commemorations often feel hollow. He said there's no draft. It was my choice to enlist. I don't need to be thanked. Maybe it feels hollow because no words or ceremony can adequately capture the honor our soldiers deserve for enlisting despite knowing that they won't return from deployment the same, if at all. I know I feel inadequate next to that level of heroism and thank you could, not, could never capture my gratitude for what our service members have done. But I'm gonna say it anyway, thank you for your service and sacrifice. I honor and respect your bravery immensely. Paulie, thank you. Trust me, I've been working with veterans for 30 years, and, but for the grace God go, go I, that we, we find ourselves in a better circumstance. And Polly literally is like a combat medic, except she's not getting shot at, but she's saving veterans' lives every day. For that, we'd like to thank her. This is a small gift from the town for, the, for you. Thank you. And then uh, Commander Cunningham. Polly, don't go away. Polly, as a thank you, We've contributed uh, in years past, and we'd like to continue to do that. And this is just a token to in front of everybody so that you can, uh, that we can share this moment together. Thank you so much. Thank you. On behalf of A6, A6 thank you. We'd like to place a wreath here at the monument to honor all our veterans from all our wars, for those that have fallen in battle, and those that passed quietly into the night in their elderly days. To do this today, we're going to have Jerry Washanko, a member of the VFW, a Vietnam veteran, Bronze Star recipient, who led his men up Hamburger Hill in Vietnam. Jerry, honor guards, bring you to attention and present Ohms. Honor guards, order arms and present and parade rest. Recognizing our Civil War heritage, I'm now asking Kristen DeFosse to come up again and sing us the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Kristen? Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah, glory. 
glory, glory, hallelujah, his truth is marching on. I have seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps. They have builded him an altar in the evening dews and damps. I can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps. His day is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His day is marching on. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to carry him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah, our God is marching on. Beautiful, thank you. Arthur Hurley was one of our veterans. He was iconic. He was a World War II veteran, and though he'd never mention it, he was a Silver Star recipient. I've met thousands of veterans, and I probably know less than 10 that actually received the Silver Star. Arthur was truly a great American. In his passing, we set up an award to honor our veterans who stand up and hold the principles of taking care of their brother veterans and sister veterans as Arthur did. On the program today, it says John Tynan, our new communications uh, person, Christina Metcalf, pointed that out to me and I still left it in. I think it was a, I just don't think I had the heart to take it out. John was truly a great veteran and a great friend. But giving the award is going to be Raymond Cunningham, our current VFW uh, commander. Our recipient is Craig Capania, a firefighter who served the VFW post for more than a decade. He had a child care issue and he cannot be here today, but receiving it for him will be another one of our great VFW members, Jackie McCarthy. Ray, Jackie, would you please come up? So uh, this is a special thanks to Craig. Craig is uh, one of those people that we all know. He's one of those kind of people that's behind the scenes. If you know him, you know him and you know what he does. If you haven't met him face to face, it's one of those kind of people that you'd like to sit down and have a cup of coffee with. So as thanks, I'm gonna hand this to you, Jack. Make sure you get this on to Craig on behalf of the VFW Post 864. Thank you, sir. I accept this award for Craig in a great honor. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to ask First Sergeant Taylor to come up one more time. And he's going to come up with Master Sergeant Bennett once again, but this time in a slightly different role. Sergeant Taylor will be representing the American Legion and presenting to Master Sergeant Yvette Bennett the Arthur Hurley Award for her immense support for our veterans in the American Legion Post. Good morning, once again. I'm going to present this award to Sergeant Bennett for her service and contribution to American Legion Post number 11. Thank you. 
I just want to say thank everybody. Thank you, First Sergeant, the Post, the Legion, everyone for this. This is a great honor. I wasn't expecting this, so this is a surprise. Thanks again. Yvette is another one of our unsung heroes. You don't see what she's doing, but boy, you'd be in trouble if she wasn't doing it. We're now going to honor our fallen one more time with taps and echoes. The uh, bugle to this today will be done by Marcus Laffey. Uh, our, our good friend Kevin is under the weather and he cannot, uh, McCarthy cannot play the bugle today, but he's with us in spirit. But Marcus, who started with me when he was this tall, is now a full grown man, will be taking, we're doing the bugle for us. Honor guards, bring your units to attention and present arms. It is now my honor once again to ask Father Jonathan Gasper, pastor of the St. Mary's Church of Brookline, to come up and give us our benediction. Father Gasper. O oh God, you who created us, who sustain us, and who call us to live in peace, hear the prayers in our hearts this day. Our prayers for all who have died, whose hearts and hopes are known to you alone. Hear our prayer for those who put the welfare of others ahead of their own, and give us hearts as generous as theirs. Hear our prayer for those who gave their lives in the service of others, and accept the gift of their sacrifice. Help us to share, to shape, and make a world where we will lay down the arms of war and turn our swords into plowshares, our spears into pruning hooks, for a harvest of justice and peace. Comfort those who grieve the loss of their loved ones and let your healing be the hope in our hearts. Hear our prayer this day, and in your mercy, answer us. Amen. Father Gatsby, thank you. As I left, the, as I left for uh, Brookline this morning, it was about 3.30 in New Hampshire, it was pouring raining. And I'm pretty sure it was Father Gasper talking to his boss that kept it dry for us today. So thank you for that also, Father Gasper. We give out one other set of awards. This is the Veterans Service Award. You don't have to be a veteran to receive this, but you do have to be a great supporter of veterans. One of the organizations that support us by getting the word out all the time and making sure people that can't be at the ceremony can still see it is the Brookline Interactive Group. And there, I call her executive director, but she said it was a different name, but that's what I had on my list. But whatever her name is, whatever her title is, the director of the big is Heather Hamilton, and she is a heart and soul. And I'd like her to come up and receive the Veterans Service Award from my office. Marina. Marina, okay. You can speak for a second. Okay. 
on behalf of Brookline Interactive Group, which for those of you that don't know, we're basically the local access cable station. So uh, Marina is my uh, partner in crime today, and we're gonna tr try to turn this video around and we're gonna try to play it on our uh, cable uh, channels, uh, Comcast 6 and 22, RCN 3 and 15, 11 a.m. on Friday morning. And so thank you very much. Heather, thank you for everything you do. And Heather supported us since she was on the Board of Selectmen. It's been immense. But, you know, one thing I learned as an Army officer is you're only as good as the people who support you. You're only as good as your men and women. And I'm, I'm really fortunate. I have great men and women. She's also very fortunate. So, Heather, I'm going to ask you to take the camera. I'd like Marina to come up for a moment, please. <laughs> Don't touch anything. I'm always getting credit for stuff, but trust me, it's my assistant, Claudia, that does most of the hard work. I know this is true for them too. So, Marina, for the whole staff of BIG, would you please accept this yes, for on our behalf? Mm -hmm. You don't have to speak if you don't want to, but if you want to say something, you're welcome to. Um, I think I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> We've embarrassed her enough. Heather, don't touch anything. Before we conclude our ceremony today, I would just like to say thank you to a few people. First of all, I'd like to thank my assistant, Claudia Leone. Again, I'm not making this up. She's the one that makes the magic happen. I sit there and get the credit. She does all the hard work. I'd like to thank the men and women of both VFW Post 864 and American Legion Post 11. They're not getting paid, I am. But they're the ones who are doing the hard work for our veterans, and they're always there for us. So let's give them a big hand. If you like the way this monument looks today, you can thank the DPW, because they're the one that did the magic here. If you appreciate the fact that we got here back and forth, that's our police department. And if you look at that amazing honor guard, that's our fire department. And it's not just Veterans Day and Memorial Day, it's every day they support veterans in everything we do. I also want to thank my boss, Sigali Reese, who's here today, who puts up with me. And trust me, that's a lot of work. Thank you, Sigal. Anybody else I forgot? I'm terribly sorry. This concludes our ceremony today. I ask you, when you see a veteran today, say thank you. We're going to look reclaimed, but we really appreciate it. It's nice to be remembered. At the end of our ceremony, we have a very nice collation at the uh, Veterans Post down the street. Please, please come and join us. It's a great social event. The food is good. And if you don't, I eat too much. And I don't want that to happen. So thank you very much. And I really appreciate you supporting us this Memorial Day. Thank you. And ending on a good note, Kristen DeFossi will now sing America the Beautiful. So I'm not Kristen DeFossi. And Bill wouldn't plan this in, so I'm going to do this because he needs to hear this. Okay, so I'm here in the town of Brookline, and it's his fault, all right? I was a transitory person. I came, studied UMass Boston, and then Bill helped me become an implant here. He's touched about every life, but I'm gonna have to have Bill see this. So help me show Bill. If you've had a conversation with Bill about veterans in our town, please raise your hand. If you have had a conversation with Bill and it hasn't done anything to do with veterans whatsoever, maybe it was just New Hampshire in general, please raise your hand. That's because I never shut up. If you have been in a town meeting and you wished Bill had shut up, please raise your hand. All right, so uh, this I think is a great moment where we all should show our thanks for Major Bill McGrody and all the stuff that he's done for this town. And my, myself, I myself, speaking for myself, I, I appreciate everything you do for us on a day in, day out. And this is the only way that I can show it to appreciate it because there's nothing that I can buy you. There's nothing that I can give you. But this I can help with an embarrassing moment like this. 
that you will remember for a very long time. So help me in saying thank you, Bill McGrody. For spacious skies, for amber waves of green, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain, America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea oh beautiful for patriot dreams that seize beyond the years thine alabaster cities gleam undimmed by human tears. America, America, God shed his grace on thee, and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Thank you very much. This concludes our ceremony, but I would also like to thank, before I forget, Arthur Sagawa, one of our VFW American Legion members who's been working all day as my roadie helping me. I couldn't have done it without him. Arthur, thank you very much. That concludes our ceremony. Remember the collation down the hall. Thank you very much for attending our ceremony today. Thank you. Day is done, gone the sun, from the hills, from the lake, from the sky. All is well, safely rest, God is nigh.